Thanks for joining me today. This is Danny and welcome back to my modded 1.10.2 series. We're back. We're back to one of my favorite worlds. Um, and we are going to be doing some more evil stuff today. More evil stuff. Um, but first, I'm going to do something really, really, really sad. I'm going to go into this chest right here. Wait. I'm going to take off my Draconic Armor. And I'm going to put on Terra Steel Armor. Um, just because... I want to go a little bit less OP today, just so that we can have a little bit- We could do living armor too. I don't know, let's just go with- We'll go with the Terra Steel armor, it's all- it's pretty good armor anyway, but it's not going to give me complete immunity like the uh, Draconic armor is. <sighs> I'm also going to get rid of these. The Draconic Staff of Power and the Draconic Bow. Um, just because I think it's going to be more fun without them today, because <laughs> these are really OP weapons and tools um, that will make the stuff that we're going to be playing with today kind of not as fun. Um, so, what I want to do today, now in the last episode, we played around a lot with um, Evil Craft, and we kind of jumped around like crazy. I mean, we went, we started with the beginnings, or, oh, oh, that was a little sneak peek of what we're doing today. Um, we started out with... Um, the beginnings with just having our little um, blood extractor and killing mobs and and we did our blood chest thing so that we could repair stuff for free we did our uh, blood infuser so we can do lots of things and then we did these entangled chalices you may remember and I have one in my inventory so that we will always have access and we also set up a mob farm to automatically have blood coming in um, and because we have the Entangled Chalices set up, that blood will be available in my inventory to the things that we're going to be playing with today. And then we also jumped right to the end game, <laughs> and we set up this uh, Nether Star. Basically, Nether Star Generator is really what it is. Um, and today, we're kind of going to take a few steps backwards, and we're going to start playing around with some of the more interesting... F oh, I can't fly! <laughs> We're going to do some of the more interesting and fun stuff um, with this mod, with Evil Craft. Um, some of the weapons, some of the items. We're going to play around with the broom so that we can get some flight back because we have no flight at the moment. The broom is so much fun. I played with the broom once before. The way the broom works is almost like the Tinker's Construct, um, Tinker's Construct tools in that you have these different parts of the brooms. Um, you have a rod, you have a brush, and you have a cap. And those three different parts have many different attributes. In fact, if we look in JEI at evil brooms, uh, we will see we have all these different um, rods, which is basically like the stick of the broom. And they have all these different modifiers. So speed modifiers, maneuverability, acceleration, and then a max modifiers, which are modifiers that we can add to the broom in addition um, to the modifiers that we get with it. And then we also have the brushes. This is the end of the broom, the part that you would, well, sweep the floor with. <laughs> These also have different attributes. And then we have the caps, which goes on the end of the rod, which has another set of attributes. So we're going to be playing around with that, and we'll see. Um, we're, we can basically custom make a broom to do um, to basically work the way we want it to and have the attributes that we want it to have. So every broom starts with the bare um, parts, the bare essentials. We have the bare rod. This is B-A-R-E, not bare as in the animal. Um, we're going to need, oh, that's right. We're going to need dark sticks, um, which come from a, undead planks. Um, we haven't played with those yet, have we? No, we haven't. Okay, so we need to get ourselves an undead tree. Um, and the way we do that is we go into a desert. Ah, <laughs> there we are. A dead bush. And we only need one, because once we have one, we can make more. We're going to take this dead bush, and we're going to put it in our blood infuser. We're going to use a little bit of blood uh, to make this undead sapling. How much blood was that? It was 2,000 millibuckets, so two buckets of blood gets us... An undead sapling and then we're going to plant this over here in our magical plane area here um, I don't believe bone meal works on these things however the ring of growth does Let's make a ring of growth from um, RF tools I mean <laughs> from actually additions and if we hold it it should get charged If we come over here, there we go. Hooray! Oh, that works beautifully. Nice. Thanks, Altec. 
Um, so here's the undead tree. Uh, we have undead logs, and if we look closely, we should see there's blood dripping from that tree. Um, maybe we're not high enough up to see it. But whatever, let's cut it down. We're going to need this wood, and then we should get some more we didn't. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, uh, usually it drops. Instead of dropping saplings, it will drop um, the dead bushes. But whatever, that's fine. We've, we've got what we need. Undead planks and a dark gem. That's how we make the dark sticks. So we're going to make, I don't know, maybe 16 of those. We'll make our bare rod. Our bare brush. Which, okay. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> so no matter what you click on in JEI, yeah, you get all the broom parts. All 14 pages were the broom parts. So I guess that's okay. And then we need the, the bear cap. So that's going to be the base component of all of the other parts. So now we have to make a decision. <laughs> what kind of rod and stuff do we want to make? So let's go back to brooms. And I'm going to take a second to hover over these and decide um, what I want to do. What we want to, what what we want to emphasize. I mean, obviously, speed is a big one for me. I want it to be fast. I want it to be crazy fast. And acceleration would be really nice too. Um, if we have a high speed with low acceleration, that just means it'll take us a long time to speed up. The acceleration will make us speed up faster. The maneuverability will make us be able to take turns faster. Now, if our maneuverability is really slow and our speed is really fast, we're going to have <laughs> if we're moving really fast and we try to turn, we're going to have to make really, really wide turns. Sturdiness. You can also, in addition to moving around with the broom, you can also use the broom as a weapon. And you use it as a weapon by crashing into things. <laughs> so you can, like, bump into mobs while you're flying and they will take damage, which is, which is fun um, and interesting and everything. Um, but the broom also takes some damage. So the sturdiness will add durability to the broom. Damage. So this will damage with colliding mobs. There's also smash, which will break blocks. Um, so you can run into blocks to break them, which is interesting. Bouncy colliding entities will be bounced away, depending on their modifier value. And then there's also withering effects, hungering effects. So you can, or you can run into somebody and they will experience hunger. And kamikaze, the broom will explode. It is very unlikely that a mounted player would survive something like this. So. I mean, it might be fun if you really want to get rid of something and you're willing to risk your life. Well, not risk your life, but you're willing to give a life for it. <laughs> and then Wither Shield will protect you from um, incoming projectiles. Toughness, this will make the broom less influenced by external factors during movement. So I'm guessing that means when you collide with other mobs, um, toughness will make the... the uh, Broom bounce less. And efficiency will make the blood, blood make the broom use less blood. Now the broom, I didn't mention this yet, but the broom does use blood. And as long as you do not use it for colliding with entities, um, it will last forever. And it, it will not use durability while you're using the broom. It will use blood, which in our case, it will take the blood out of our chalice. Um, you can also have your um, blood extractor in your swimming. This makes makes the broom better maneuverable in liquids. So we can actually fly through the water um, if we have the swimming. And then icy slows down colliding entities. Basically causes a slowness effect to things that you collide with. Um, and then you can see here are the modifiers. So like I said, there are modifiers with the parts themselves that when you, you automatically get the modifiers depending on which parts you use, um, which materials you use to make the parts, but then we also have additional modifiers that you can add. So, and another star, as you can see, or the uh, Garman Banzia will give you an extra modifier. So we can really get this thing totally OP. And of course, we have our little another star generator over here, so we can add lots of modifiers. Um, I can't remember what the maximum is, but we're going to find out because we're going to max this thing out. <laughs> And, you know, my, this is my favorite modifier right here. We got speed, and that's redstone. Acceleration is coal. Um, glowstone gives us maneuverability. You can look through here and see, you know. Um, so let's let's start with the blaze rod. I think that's the same thing I did. <laughs> so the blaze rod, it's called, um, requires, as you might guess, blaze rods. So two blaze rods and a bear rod makes a blaze rod. <laughs> 
So let's do that. So we we made our bear rod. We'll grab our blaze. We'll grab a couple. Of bl huh? Is that really true? Okay, I <laughs> ran around the Nether for a little while. Finally got some blaze rods. Can you believe I don't even have? Eh, never mind. <laughs> okay, so there's our blaze rod, and then the brush. Let's go with wool. That gives us speed and levitation so that we can go up really high. Uh, no, that's feather. What does feather do? That just gives us, oh, that gives us a lot of levitation. And of course we have wither, which withers. And, oh, come on. They're all, they're all mixed up. There's the wool brush. And that's 80 speed. Okay, so there's a lot of caps. I think I'm going to go with the emerald um, because it gives us two extra modifiers which we can do whatever we want with. None of the other ones do. So let's do that. So emerald cap, we have to find it because JEI doesn't take us directly there for whatever reason. So it's just two, gemerald, two, two emeralds and a cap. And then we just take these three pieces and we put them together to make dun, 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 a broom. Check it out. Plus 150 levitation. Flame, 2. Speed, 330. Maneuverability, 150, which is pretty decent. Acceleration, 200, which is also pretty... This is going to be a pretty nice broom already. So let's mount this guy and fly. Hooray! So we're flying. And it flies in the direction that you face. As you can see, we go down, we go up. Nice. Very fun, but of course we can make this much, much, much faster. We shift, hit shift to dismount. Um, then we can look at it and we can see that we have five modifiers that we can add to this guy. So to add modifiers, all you do is put them in a crafting grid. It's pretty easy. With one block of redstone, that adds nine. Oh yeah, we can do this. <laughs> we don't have to do this a whole bunch of times. Okay, so how many modifiers? We're still only using one modifier. Okay, so it looks like we maxed out one of our modifiers. So now our speed is up to an additional 100. So exactly 100. So 100 redstone used one modifier and added 100 to our speed. Let's do acceleration next. That's going to be coal. And again, we're probably going to be able to add 100 coal with a single modifier. Okay, so that should bring us right up to 100. Yeah, nice. Okay, now, now the only damage that we have right now that we would do to other mobs is flame damage. I don't know if I want to use a modifier. Let's just, let's play with this a little bit right now. Let's see how much faster it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that made a big difference. Holy crap. Okay. Especially the acceleration. I've never tried this before. This is a little tricky. All right, let's just run into that zombie. <laughs> Darn it. Let's try to run into the zombie. There we go. So he's burning. Yay. Still have th three modifiers left. And we haven't even added any nether stars to it. Um, let's see how many, how many we can add. Okay, that brings it up to six. Okay. So we can, we can get it up to... Eight, so we can add eight modifiers. Holy crap! This thing is going to be wow. It's going to be crazy fast. All right, so let's check out. Let's check out the max speed. Why not? Hey. Um. Now we didn't increase our acceleration at all, so we're still going. Oh my gosh. That is pretty fast. Very nice. <laughs> wow. We. Under. No, sprinting doesn't seem to make a difference. <laughs> In this amplified terrain, it's the world that Jen is going to have a little hard time keeping up with us. Nice. And what's cool about this, too, if we go up really high and then dive down, we're going to go crazy fast. Wow. <laughs> Wee! Nice! That is cool. Alright, and we still have we still have four modifiers left. Okay, 
So now we have max speed and max acceleration. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, that's awesome. Each, okay, each one gives us two, so we only need 50. Okay. <laughs> nice. So now we can take much sharper turns. Whee! I wouldn't mind improving that even a little bit more. But then we'll be that'll be it for our modifiers. Interesting little fact about the broom, it actually is like a vehicle entity in the world. So if, if my inventory is full and I dismount, it stays there, floating in the world. <laughs> and of course I can just right click on it to, to get back on again. Let's add some damage. Oops. So what are we at? Collision damage, eight. So we should be able to get a hundred collision damage. I don't know exactly what that corresponds to in like actual damage damage, but we're about to find out. Okay, 100 collision damage and our modifiers are all maxed out. Bum, bum, bum. Now we're gonna wait till nighttime, but in the meantime, so four of these, five of those, and this thing will fill up with blood and we can basically use it like an enderpearl. But as you can see, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> what? As you can see, it's... Oh, wow. Okay, that took a while. As you can see, it's got a bit more of a range than an Ender Pearl. Um, yeah. <laughs> and we don't take any damage. And, of course, it's not consumed by the throw like an Ender Pearl would be. But, of course, it uses blood. So if we do this again, let's say we want to get up there. Nice. Very cool. <laughs> Yeah, this is, a gr and you, you saw how much it was. It's not terribly expensive, so for earlier game, this is a really great way to get around. And I'm actually not sure if we would take fall damage like we would with an enderpearl. Whoa, well, now we would, for sure. <laughs> I made this one in my server play series. Um, this is the Invigorating Pendant. It's just some string with gold nuggets and a couple crushed gems, and then this Blood Infusion Core, which we've made a few times um, in the past. And that will basically take away all nasty potion effects. Now, right now, we have some pretty good protection with our terrestrial armor, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, but it's very nice. It gets rid of wither, it gets rid of everything, and it just uses blood, like everything else. And then the prime pendant um, does the opposite. It actually takes a potion. We could do like a speed potion or something, and it will use blood, and it will apply that potion to us forever. Um, the effortless ring we talked about last time, it's basically like the... Uh, Globetrotter Sash from Britannia, and as you can see, it's not terribly expensive. It's a promise of product productivity and a promise of velocity. Um, the Scepter of Thunder makes a thunderstorm, which we may find useful at some point in the future. The Vengeance Pickaxe is basically a pickaxe that gives you fortune right away, but it also summons Vengeance Spirits, and it's lowered in durability. Um, Gemstone Torch will prevent Vengeance Spirits from spawning. Rejuvenating Flesh is kind of like our... Um, Fruit of the Gaia, or the Fruit of the Grissai, where but instead of using mana, it will use blood, and we can eat blood. <laughs> we can eat blood forever. It's not great. So here's where things things get interesting. So there's the Vein Sword. This sword basically is a sword with looting. It automatically comes with looting. It's just and it's fairly cheap. Looting two, and it also gives you more blood um, into your blood extractor, which we don't really need at the moment. But I do want to check this out. The Mace of Distortion. Um, this looks pretty interesting. Basically what this does is it causes an AoE of damage um, around us. And then there's also the Mace of Destruction which does an AoE of block damage. But uh, I'm not so excited about that one. Remember earlier on we found um, a dark temple and it had an environmental accumulator in it. We needed an inver inverted potentia that's empowered with lightning. Um, so what we have to do is make an inverted potentia, put it in the environmental accumulator during a lightning storm, and we will then get the empowered inverted potentia. So um, first we make our potentia sphere, then we make our inverted potentia, and then we need a lightning storm. Um, we can actually do that with, well we can do that with uh, 
this where did that go this guy the scepter of thunder so we could make the th scepter of thunder and it would produce a lightning storm for us it's a one-time use so it's kind of expensive you use it once it goes away <laughs> and you end up with a lightning storm we actually have another way to get a lightning storm with draconic evolution so i'm just going to make a lightning storm with this guy then we're going to go fly off to oh, that's pretty cool <laughs> Look at that! Alright, so there's the storm. Now I'm going to fly around looking for a dark temple. I don't remember where I saw that last one, and I didn't make a waypoint, so I guess I'm just going to fly around and look for it. Well, one. I found one, but unfortunately it stopped raining. Um, <laughs> uh, largely because of a server crash. Um, I it's So I lost some time there, but... I'm going to show a different way to get a lightning storm, and a different way to control the weather. So now that we have found one of these dark temples, um, this opens up quite a bit of, quite a few things in the mod for us. Um, but one of the things that allows us to do is to capture the weather. So right now we have sunny skies. So if we throw one of these weather containers, which are made like so, it's just dark gem, glass bottle, and some sugar. So they're pretty cheap. Throw that in there and you can see the environmental accumulator is charging or the charge is going out or something like that and now we have a weather container with my only sunshine and you can see it is now storming Hooray. so now we can put our potentia in here and actually if we look at the recipe for this we'll see that <laughs> sunny skies gives us or, and an empty weather container gives us rainy skies and my only sunshine um, and then if we look at the other recipes, well, there's a number of other recipes, but with the with the uh, weather containers, we can capture the thunder, <laughs> and we get sunshine, and we can capture um, when the rain begins to fall and get sunshine. So I'm going to throw this inverted potentia in here. Oh, we're waiting for the environmental accumulator to charge again. It does take a little bit of time. And there is kind of a way to make one of these at home. If we break this thing, we will not get it. Um, we're going to get an item that will allow us to build a similar thing at home, but it's not quite the same. It requires a ton of blood. And um, Oh, there, I was going to say, where'd that go? Okay, strike with lightning to empower. Hooray! So we have the inverted potentia with lightning in it, and we should now see that we have... Sunny skies? It's hard to tell because the lighting is glitched in here. Um, let me see if I can fix that. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we do have... This is a dungeon. And <laughs> we do have dungeon loot, which I didn't even look at. What do we get? A green rune. We got an actual editions manual, gold ingots, and some nether wart. Okay. Interesting. I'm sorry. Environmental accumula accumulator is charging again. Okay. I'm going to throw this in here again. Okay, so now we have when the rain begins to fall. That's where we can make the eternal water block with that. Mace of distortion. With our inverted potentia that we just struck with lightning, we got dark power gems, and a couple of dark sticks. And we're going to fill that up with blood. And, oh, and it's nearly nighttime. Hooray. So we'll get to test out two things tonight. Hitting things with our broom <laughs> and our mace of distortions. Let's see if we can run into this guy. <laughs> There we go. So we cause damage and fire. Let's see how much damage. Oh. Okay, so not a whole lot of damage, but a little bit. A fair amount. We'll hold right click. And we see kind of this aura comes around us. And it damages and it should knock back too. Knock back the things around us. Power one, two, three, four. <laughs> this and boom <laughs> oh wow very nice I wonder how much power that uses or how much blood <laughs> oh my god that is so awesome I love it wait let's go over here oh he landed in water <laughs> that is great 
Wow! That is beautiful! It was a dark and stormy night. A perfect night to start playing... <laughs> playing around with necromancy. Well, it's not gonna be dark and stormy for much longer, I guess. The necromancer's staff. <laughs> Couple spikes, the inverted potentia, a skeleton skull, blah blah, yeah. All stuff we've played with before. Oh no, oh no, it's getting to be daytime. Oh, wow. Oh, that's not what I was expecting. I certainly wasn't expecting them to come after me. What? <laughs> I wasn't expecting my team to turn on me. Meet my army. <laughs> they come from behind me, that's interesting. What? <laughs> they don't last very long. There we go. You too. You mean my army too. Darn it. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. These guys just decided on their own that they were going to go after each other. Hello. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> What? No, you're not supposed to go after me. <laughs> Alright, this doesn't seem perfect. <laughs> Seems a little slightly flawed. Some of them like to come after me. What? Okay, so, oh, so they disappear when your enemy dies. Interesting, okay. Oh no, they just disappear whenever. <laughs> no, no, you guys. You're going after the wrong guy. <laughs> Such disloyalty! <laughs> nice. I love watching mobs fight each other. The longer you hold it down, the more it charges. So, we're at power 4 now, which means... We're gonna start out a lot. <laughs> oh, beautiful! I love it! Let's just charge this thing all the way up. Actually, I don't know how you know when it's fully charged, but whatever. Whee! Master Distorter! <laughs> nice! What is that? Distort over 10 mobs at once with the Mace of Distortion. Oh, wow, I did. Yeah, there's XP all over the place. Wow, this thing must have quite a range. Let's stand right here. I'm going to pull it back for quite a while. And then let go. Oh, wow, look at that. It damaged him way over there. It didn't do as much damage, but... <laughs> nice. This, I think this is one of my favorite weapons. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you were saved by the cliff, by the cliff edge. Let's see how it affects this Enderman. Oh wow, really? That's nice. Oh my god, I'm, I okay. I could just do this all day long. Oh my god! Did you see that? He was way up in the air. <laughs> Nice. Alright, anyway. <laughs> I think we need to stop. I'm just doing the same thing over and over again because it's so much fun. I hope you enjoyed this evil episode of Evil Craft. <laughs> and uh, I think we covered a little bit of everything in Evil Craft. I mean, there's certainly things that we haven't played with yet, but um, we, had, we played with some of the tools, some of the weapons. Yeah. Obviously, the awesome OP broom that's crazy fast and fun. It is really fun. It's a really fun way to get around. And, and of course, these guys are really fun too. 
I don't know, just overall, I think that EvoCraft is a really fun mod to play. It's it's silly, it's fun, It's the progression is fun, the tools are fun, and it's also quite powerful and useful too, so... Um, it's really kind of becoming one of my favorite mods, I think. So, <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed this too, as much as I did, I really did enjoy this. Um, and if you do have any questions or comments, of course, whoa, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. <laughs> Of course, don't forget to click the like button if you did enjoy this, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.